Well, congratulations to Iowa State fans. You guys got it done. You won the Big 12 tournament in absolutely dominant fashion on Saturday night in Kansas City as uh, it was all Cyclone 69 to 41 over the one seed Houston Cougars. I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports is how you find us covering the Big 12. Make sure you hit that thumbs up below the video and of course, um, if you're on the podcast, leave that five-star rating and review. So what did Iowa State do so well? Well, they basically did exactly what Houston does to everybody else. They smacked them in the mouth on defense. And all year long, if you're a Big 12 fan, you've watched Iowa State, you've watched Houston, and Houston has gotten an incredible amount of love and attention for its defense. And rightfully so. Well-deserved, well-earned, right? Right. However, Iowa State's defense has been not as good as Houston's, but has been one of the best defenses in America, one of the best five defenses, give or take, in America. You see the numbers. They flash the numbers on the screen at the end of the game. Iowa State, when it comes to forcing turnovers, turnover margins, points against, I mean, they are right at the top in the nation in all of those categories. And what they did on Saturday night to Houston in this Big 12 championship game is exactly what Houston has been doing to the rest of the Big 12 and the rest of the country all season. And Iowa State has done a lot of it, too. It just hasn't gotten the same amount of attention or credit. But you look at what Iowa State did. It was almost a perfect game. You shot 50% from the floor right? You shot 41% from three-point range. You held Houston to 27% shooting and 18% from downtown. You won the turnover margin. You beat them on the boards. I mean, you did everything that you would want to do going up against a Houston Cougars team that looked mortal for the first time in a month and a half. So this is exactly how you want to feel if you're an Iowa State Cyclones fan and you're getting set for the NCAA tournament coming up next week. Now, what does it mean? I don't think it means a lot. Iowa State, to me, is still going to be a solid two seed. Lenardi had him as his last two seed in the latest bracketology. I don't see that changing. I see Iowa State as a solid number two seed when all is said and done. But for Houston, they had an opportunity to be the number one overall seed if they had won this game. They would have been the number one overall seed. That's now not going to be the case anymore. That's probably going to go to UConn. After Purdue lost, it looked like Houston could win the game against Iowa State and be the number one overall seed. That's not going to happen anymore. It probably should go to UConn after they just win the Big East tournament. But once again, not a big deal. Houston, to me, is still going to be the one seed, even though that was beyond dominant. I mean, if you want to make a case that Iowa State's the one and Houston's the two, you can do it. But even the most diehard Iowa State fan, I got to imagine, is going to be like, no, we're a two. They're a one. Let's get ready for next week. Right now, of course, Iowa State, you know, they call it Hilton South for a reason. One of the other big storylines coming out of this game and one of the big I don't want to call it complaints, but frustrations I heard from tech fans and Baylor fans this week was just that Iowa state dominated power and light and dominated Kansas city. And they did. I was there on Friday, bumped into a couple of you outside of T-Mobile. It was great to see some of our our readers, our our viewers, our, our followers um, around the big 12 tournament this week when I was down there on Friday afternoon, but you cannot blame or you cannot point the finger to moving the Big 12 tournament around because Iowa State fans create and make Kansas City Hilton South. Iowa State fans travel almost anywhere in the country. Like, if you think that this Big 12 tournament being in Kansas City is the reason that Iowa State dominates this town, then you don't watch enough Iowa State athletics. Iowa State fans travel for football. They travel for basketball. They travel for basically any sport if it makes sense and if their team's playing well. That's what they do. So to try to justify this is why the Big 12 tournament needs to go somewhere else. It needs to go to Dallas 
for Tech fans or Baylor fans. And I love you guys, too. But let's be honest. If this game tonight was in Dallas, I guarantee you Iowa State fans still outnumber Houston fans. I guarantee you that would have been the case. No doubt in my mind. You know, and and same thing with some of the other games. Whether it was last night, Iowa State Baylor. I don't think Baylor fans would have outnumbered Iowa State fans if this game was in Dallas at American Airlines. Iowa State fans travel. They're notorious for it. They're outstanding at it, by the way. So do not try to move the tournament out of Kansas City with the justification of, well, you know, Iowa State fans, it's like a home game for them. You know what? Then show up. I know it's not easy. I'm not saying it is. All right. But, you know, there's enough. There's thousands of fans for each of these fan bases, each of these alum bases. I, If you don't want to come up from Dallas or Houston or Austin, if you're a Baylor Tech or Houston alum or a fan, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But don't rag on Iowa State fans because they show up, because they travel, because they're going to make that drive down 35 from Ames and come down to Kansas City. They're just going to do it. And yeah, for you, fine, you got to hop on a plane last minute. I understand it's not quite as convenient, but it is doable. You also could make the drive. I've done it down to Dallas, depending on where you're at. So I, I, I do not like the idea of bouncing it around just because Iowa State fans really show out. Because they show out anywhere. You got to follow Iowa State Athletics to know that. They do. And yes, it felt like a home game. Every game they played in this tournament, no doubt about it. Now, for Iowa State, uh, it has been an incredible run for them in this conference tournament. They have now won it five times going back to 2014. They won it in 14. They won it in 15. They won it in 17. They won it in 19. And now they won it again. But, and here's the but, if you're an Iowa State fan, the Cyclones have not played well in the NCAA tournament After winning the Big 12 tournament, they always seem to have a letdown in the NCAA tournament after they win the Big 12 tournament. Now, if you want the silver lining, if you want what's different, this team is much better than those other teams that won the Big 12 tournament. But I looked it up before we started the show and you go back to 2019 after they won the Big 12 tournament, they beat Kansas in that championship game. They lost to Ohio State in the first round as a six seed. You go back to 2017, they lost in the second round. Um, After beating Nevada in the first round, they lost in the second round that year to Purdue. You go back to 2015, they were a three seed. And what happened to them? They lost to 14 seed UAB in the first round. You got to go back to 2014, when uh, they got to the Sweet 16 before losing to UConn. You get to a Sweet 16, that's a successful season. After that, you're playing with house money. But all in all, I mean, this is one of those situations where Iowa State has not played well after winning a Big 12 tournament. The question is, can this year, can TJ Otzelberger kind of shake that off? Because this is a highly emotional week. The fan base loves it. They're engaged. It's Hilton South. They're all fired up. It's a very emotionally draining week for Iowa State. But this can't be your Super Bowl. The Big 12 tournament cannot replace the NCAA tournament. You don't want it to be that case. You want it to be exciting. You want it to be thrilling. You want to be fired up about it. But you don't want it to replace the NCAA tournament. And this team is different. There's no doubt about it. This team is different. However, it's still one of those things that I'm looking at and I'm sitting back and I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm cautiously optimistic because this team is built on defense. This team has a defense that those other four teams would die for, right? And and that's what makes me more confident. If your team is built on defense going into the, the tournament, you're in a very good place because defense, it's cliche, but defense travels in a way that, of course, offense does not. Um, and three-point shooting does not. But if you got that defense on lockdown, you got a chance. And especially as a two-seed, that's the other thing, of course. You're a two-seed this year. So theoretically, although we've seen those upsets, of course, 
theoretically, you should be in a pretty good spot to avoid. I mean, I say this, but you should have a relatively easy or easier path to get to a sweet 16. And if this team gets to a sweet 16, they should feel very good about the season. Not saying you don't want the elite eight or you don't want the final four, but get to that sweet 16. If you're Iowa state, which is something it hasn't done in uh, a little bit. So a uh, great win for the cyclones, dominant performance. I mean, as dominant as it's going to get. And I saw this, I got the ESPN push notification here that Iowa state held Houston to, of course, 41 points, and that is the fewest points by an AP number one team since before the shot clock era. I I mean, that is just unbelievable. It puts into perspective what this Cyclones team did in this game. And it looked good early on, but really when you go back and look at this game, Iowa State dominated it, obviously, in both halves, but they had a seven-point lead at halftime. The question was, how are they going to come out in the second half? And they came out and they they picked up right where they left off. They hit a jumper. Lipsy gets a steal. Gilbert hits a layup. I mean, they start this thing off on, I think it was a 10-0 run to start the second half for the Cyclones. And that right there put this game away. You, you think, hey, it's the number one team in the country. They're going to shake this off for the second half and they're going to be coming out firing on all cylinders. And they weren't. Iowa State owned them. And they owned them in the first three, four minutes of the second half when they went on a 10-0 run to start the second half. And by then, they were up 17 points, and it was game, set, match. And you knew that Houston was not coming back in this thing. Now, for Houston, I don't mind this loss for Houston. You know, they had won 11 straight games. Do you really want to go into the NCAA tournament with 12 straight wins? If you are the, if you're going to be a one seed, is it the worst thing in the world to lose this game, have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder going into selection Sunday and going into the tournament next week? I don't mind this. I don't think Kelvin Samson should mind this at all. You know, if guys start feeling themselves a little bit too much, this is a great wake-up call. And think about this. The wake-up call doesn't cost you anything. Maybe it costs you the number one overall seed, but they're still going to be the one seed in the South, right? They're going to be playing in their backyard, more or less. So you don't lose anything. I, yes, you would have liked to have won the Big 12 tournament in your first year in the Big 12. That would have been great for you and your team and your fan base and the alum base and everything else. But you won the big 12 regular season championship. You're a number one. You're going to be a number one seed and you lose this game and you guys get to hit the reset button as you get set for the biggest part, the most important part of the season. I don't mind it. I don't hate it. I don't think Kelvin Sampson should hate it. Now he should have some questions, right? And his team has been a little banged up, and they did not look like themselves on Saturday. So I'm not saying he should feel good about it. But he shouldn't hate the fact that his team lost this lost this game. He just shouldn't. So all in all, that's, that's a very good situation um, for Houston. They're going to be just fine. And the Big 12 is likely punching a ticket to the NCAA tournament. Excuse me. They're likely punching nine tickets to the NCAA tournament when all is said and done comes selection Sunday. I don't see Kansas State getting in at this point. Too much has happened. Cincinnati, forget it. It's not going to take place. I can make the case for Kansas State, and Jerome Tang made that case as well. But um, I, there's been too many other things that have happened around the country that are going to prevent Kansas State from getting in. And the reality is this, you know, Kansas State came up short on some games that they could have easily won. That's why when it comes to a field of 68, I don't lose a lot of sleep over the bubble teams. I, I don't know about you, but like there's 68 teams. If you were on the bubble and you thought you should have been in, you should have won one or two more games. It's college basketball. If you can't get into this thing, then you know what? I, I, I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep for you unless it's egregious. And there's nothing right now that suggests it's going to be totally egregious come Selection Sunday. I, I remain, I could be surprised, but I don't think that's going to end up happening. 
I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports is where you find us covering the Big 12. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button on the video, as uh, we always appreciate you guys doing each and every week and each and every show. And by the way, um, if you are new to the show and you're just checking us out, make sure that you are on the Heartland College Sports message boards. They're free. They're on the website, and it's a great way to interact with a bunch of other Big 12 fans. So all in all, great stuff. Really good to be here. Appreciate you guys joining us. And um, it's always fun to be talking Big 12 basketball. If we saw you down there, by the way, at T-Mobile, that was awesome. We did the Big 12 Eats contest, which um, I'm still digesting from. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> we tried every single team's Big 12 Eats, myself and Matthew Postens, on Friday afternoon at T-Mobile Center. The Big 12 hooked us up with a taste test, and my stomach still feels like trash. Not because the food wasn't good. The food was. But when you're going pizza to burger to uh, loaded tots to brisket sandwiches to smoothies uh, to churros, your stomach's not going to be feeling good either. So I've got a um, plumber on speed dial for the week because I don't know what this week's going to look like in my house. I mean, I may just destroy every bathroom I have in this home. So just say a prayer for my family. I've got a wife and three kids, and uh, they're going to need all the prayers that you could give us this week. All right? That's that's all I've got, that's all I've got for you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's get to some of your comments here on the show. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're on YouTube Live. We're on Facebook Live. We are on Twitter as well. Uh, Pete, you're correct. Houston will be a one seed. Iowa State will be a two seed. That's from Matt on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff, I'm a big Iowa State fan. Even I can't believe how good they played tonight. Omaha bound. Yes, you guys will be in Omaha for the first round. And guess what? Um, are your opponents and their fan base is also going to bitch and moan about how you guys dominate uh, the stadium and the arena in Omaha? I don't want to hear it. It's so lame. It is just so, so lame. Uh, Dan says, I did not expect that result. Iowa State's defense has been good all year but their offense has come to life. Yeah, it absolutely has. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, Don says, keep the tournament in Kansas City, and it looks like Don is a Red Raider fan. So good on you, Don. I agree. I agree. Doug says, preach it, Pete. Suck it all, you Texas teams. Hey, listen. The Texas teams can show up. I want everybody in the Big 12 to come to Kansas City and have a great time. But, like, listen, Baylor fans don't show up to a lot. Like, I'm just going to be honest. Baylor fans don't show up to a lot. Uh, they don't travel all that well. They don't. I mean, I, I you know, and I got a great group of guys that I know who are Baylor fans and Baylor alum, and they're diehard and they're passionate, but they just don't show up in numbers. Tech fans can and do. Um, TCU hit or miss, but also TCU and Baylor are smaller and private schools. So it's just sometimes it's simply a numbers game. It's nothing personal, but you don't move a great atmosphere to try to make something equitable when we've tried the atmosphere in Dallas and it absolutely sucked for the Big 12 tournament. You just can't do it. Uh, some of you noting that Iowa State was in the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago. You're right about that. Gosh, they were, weren't they? My bad. I said it's been a little bit. So they were in the Sweet 16, you're right, two years ago. But there was a big gap there. I think Steve Prohm got there in his first year, as I recall. Hoiberg got there once. But you're right. Otzelberger got there two years ago. My bad. Brain fart by me. Hey, we're doing live shows. It happens. But I was thinking back to the Steve Prohm Sweet 16. I forgot about I just had a brain fart on two years ago. So you guys are right on uh, YouTube about that. Spot on. Spot on. Uh, Pete, who you got for West Virginia's next head coach? Man, I have no freaking idea. I do know this much. If you didn't see this, a mega booster at West Virginia said publicly this weekend he wants Bob Huggins back. Do I think Bob Huggins is coming back to West Virginia? No. No way. But what that signals to me, if mega boosters are speaking to the media, 
about Bob Huggins coming back. That tells me that this is going to be a very controversial process for the Mountaineers to find their next head coach. It has been a frustrating, controversial several months. Um, there's going to be a lot of targets, of course, for the Mountaineers. And, and a lot of these guys, of course, might end up playing in the tournament. It might take a couple of weeks to figure out who that next guy is going to be. But West Virginia is a great job. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. When you talk about having a passionate fan base for football and basketball, the Mountaineers have a very underrated fan base for basketball. A lot of Big 12 fans don't see it because, um, you know, you don't get it as much in Kansas City. They don't travel to the Big 12 tournament. It's very difficult to get from Morgantown to Kansas City. But I'm telling you, as someone who used to spend time in the Big East, when West Virginia was in the Big East, those guys are passionate. They show up. That fan base is electric when they're playing well. So it's a very good job. And whoever gets it is going to land a situation where you can immediately become a top 25 team and a top 25 program. They'll support you there as well. So somebody is going to be attracted to an outstanding job. But right now, I just think that the money people, the administration, the athletic department, there are a lot of people that are bumping heads on this next hire. And I could see it taking quite a few twists and turns to figure out who the next head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers is going to be. But it's a good job. And um, if you were to stack this up, right, if you were to say when it comes to Big 12 fans, you know, some are more basketball, some are more football, right? Like right now, Oklahoma State has no basketball fans, but great football fans. KU great basketball fans, improving football fans, but listen, it's a basketball school. West Virginia, when it comes to football and basketball, if all else is equal, I, they're right up there. They're in that upper echelon of fans in both sports when they're playing well. They will support both of those programs equally in a way some fan bases won't. So it's, it's worth something. We should not overlook that. As we get set to talk about some of those openings here moving forward, I'm Pete Mundo. It is uh, great to be with you guys as always. Thank you for joining us on the show and being a part of it. So, you know, we will do a selection Sunday show coming up on Sunday night. All right. So, we're going to do that on Sunday night. We'll have a lot more to get to as we'll get all the seedings for the Big 12 teams. We'll know where they're going to be in the bracket. We are also going to do a bracket challenge that you can only get to and you can only partake in if you are a member of our Big 12 message boards. So those are free. Hop on the website and uh, make sure you're signed up. We'll give you directions on that coming up on Monday for the Heartland College Sports NCAA Tournament Bracket Challenge. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being here. What a great win by Iowa State. What an awesome tournament week, by the way, for the Big 12. I love how much Brett Yormark and this new Big 12 leadership has embraced this town. They realize what they've got here. And I had so many conversations with people in and around the conference who agree that this tournament in this town is so unique because they take it over in a way that the ACC cannot do in Washington, D.C. The Big 10 can't do in, I think they're in what, Minneapolis, Chicago? I think it's Minneapolis. Um, the Pac-12 RIP can't do in Vegas. It's just different. The SEC is not going to do it in Nashville the way that this tournament does it in this town. Hope you guys had a great week. We'll be talking to you soon. Subscribe to the show. That way you never miss it. And um, it's going to be a fun week ahead. Selection Sunday, Sunday night. We'll do a show right after Selection Sunday here on Heartland College Sports. I'm Pete Mundo. Go Big 12.